The molar mass is defined as the mass in units of grams of one mole of any type of substance. Could be anything. Almost always when we're talking about molar masses, we're looking at atoms like gold, the molar mass of gold, or, or molecules like water, what's the molar mass of water. But theoretically, you could calculate the molar mass of any type of substance if you wanted to. For, let's focus on atoms. For atoms, the molar masses are all listed on the periodic table. Let's zoom in and let's focus on boron right here. Now, we already know that this is the atomic number of boron, that's the number of protons in its nucleus. And then we also know right here that this is the average mass of a boron atom based on its isotopic abundance, which I talked about in a previous video, the average mass in units of AMU. That number, the average mass, is also the molar mass of that particular atom. So this is the molar mass in units of grams per mole. So this is saying that this is the mass in grams of one mole of boron. So let's write that down. One mole of boron is 10.811 grams. And likewise, one mole of zinc is 65.38 grams. And for germanium, one mole is 72.631 grams. And you get the idea. We can use this relationship to help us convert back and forth between moles and grams of any atom, as long as we have a periodic table and we can look up its molar mass. If we wanted to use this like a conversion factor, we would just turn it into a fraction. We could say one mole of boron per 10.811 grams of boron, or we could write it the other way around. 10.811 grams of boron is one mole of boron. And we could use this conversion factor in either direction based on how we want to set the units up for cancellation. Let's take a look at some examples of how we can do these types of conversions and how we can use these molar masses. So here's the problem. How many moles of beryllium are in 2.109 grams of beryllium. Now, when you're looking at a problem like this, this type of problem, I want you to think about it just the same way you would think about a unit conversion problem. So you're going to approach this problem in the same way that you would approach if I said, how many inches are in 2.109 centimeters? If I ask you to do a centimeter to inch conversion, you're going to take the same type of approach. So that means that you want to start the problem by writing the information that you know, the stuff that has been given to you in the problem. What we know is that we have 2.109 grams of beryllium. And just like other unit conversion problems, we know that we want to multiply that number by a conversion factor in the form of a fraction. And in our conversion factor, we want our unwanted unit to be down on the bottom so that they will mathematically cancel each other out. And we want our desired unit to be up on top, moles of beryllium. So now what we need to do is find the relationship between moles and grams of, in this case, beryllium. And to do that, we're going to look at the periodic table. We're going to find beryllium. It's right here. Let me zoom in on it. The molar mass of beryllium is 9.012. And let's take a look over here just as a reference. One mole is that quantity. One mole of beryllium is 9.012 grams. So that means one mole of beryllium is 9.012 grams. And all we have to do is do the math. And for this, mathematically, we're going to do 2.109 
divided by 9.012, and there is our result. Let's stick with our sig fig, so we're going to say 0 0.2340. 0 0.2340. Let's take a look at how our units cancel. And the unit that we're left with is mole of beryllium. So you see that this isn't that tricky. If you take the same type of strategy that you would use for any type of unit conversion problem. So let's work on the next one. This one's actually a little bit harder. How many atoms are in 2.0 grams. So we will always start by writing the information that's been given to us. This time we've been given 2.0 grams. And we want to multiply by a conversion factor that lets us cancel out units of grams of potassium. Now, when we go to the periodic table, when we look up potassium, let's find it over here. This is the molar mass of potassium, 39.098. That's the mass of a mole of potassium. So 39.098 grams, that's the mass of one mole. That's not really our desired unit, but like we've seen in other unit conversion problems, we're going to be able to work with that. It's just gonna take a couple steps. The mole is not the unit that we want. So let's set up another conversion factor with moles of potassium on the bottom. The unit that we do want is atoms of potassium. How many atoms are in a mole? Well, remember our idea, the mole is just like a pair or a dozen. One mole is 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd atoms just like one dozen would be two atoms, or sorry, one dozen would be 12 atoms, or one pair would be two atoms, one mole is 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd. That cancels out our units of moles of potassium, and we're gonna be left with the units of atoms of potassium. We'll come back and do the math on that after we get the other one set up. Here's a slightly different approach. This time we're given the moles of zinc and we're asked to figure out how many grams that is. That's okay. We're just going to start by setting up the problem, write the thing that we know. We know that we have 0 0.500 moles of zinc. We want a conversion factor that lets us put moles of zinc down in the bottom. Let's go find zinc on the periodic table. Zinc is right here, and we can see that it is 65.38 grams per mole. One mole is 65.38 grams. And it looks like that's the only step that we need to take to convert from moles to grams. So this problem is all set up and ready to enter in the calculator. And let's get our last one set up. What is the mass? of one atom of gold, AU is gold. So we'll start by writing what we know. We know that we have one atom of AU. Notice for all these problems, I'm not just writing that we have an atom or a mole or a gram. I'm also writing what the substance is. That helps me when I go to the periodic table to make sure that I'm looking up the right element. I want a conversion factor here that's going to put atoms of gold down on the bottom. There's not a whole lot that I can convert to when I'm in units of atoms. It's really all that I can do is use Avogadro's number, 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd, and convert into moles. So again, whenever you are being asked to calculate atoms or calculate from atoms, you're going to always end up using Avogadro's number in there to get out of that atom unit and into the mole unit or vice versa, like we did up here. So this step, we are going to take care of our units of atoms of gold. And now we need one more step where we can get rid of the units of moles of gold and convert into units of grams of gold. Let's go to the periodic table. We're looking for gold, AU, right here and its mass is 196.967. 
that means 196.967 grams per mole. In that step, we cancel out the mole units, and we're ready to do the math on these all three of these problems. So let's start with the first one. To set this up mathematically, we're going to go 2 divided by 39.098 times 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd. 2 divided by 39.098 times 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd. Looking at sig figs, we have two sig figs right here, five sig figs and four. Two sig figs means that we can only have our answer to two significant figures. So that's going to be 3.1 times 10 to the 22. And our units of that are atoms of potassium. For our next problem, we have 0.5 times 65.38. We have three significant figures and four significant figures, so our answer should have three. And that will be 32.7. The units are grams of zinc. And for our last problem, we have 1 divided by 6.022 times 10 to the third, 23rd times 196.967. 1 divided by 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd times 196.967. We have one sig fig. Well, actually, this is a counted number. So this is actually an infinite number of significant figures. We have four sig figs here and six right here. So we're restricted to four significant figures. And so that will be... 3.271 times 10 to the negative 22 grams of gold.